Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to unbox and review this Barrel AX Wi-Fi 6 router with a fast speed rating of AX3000 considering its size. So we get some instructions, how to set it up, what, where to go to to access its settings. So I'll show you guys how to do all of that. As a travel router, what's the point of this? Well, if you're traveling, you're staying at a hotel and you're connecting to the hotel's Wi-Fi, some hotels may have limitations like, oh, you can only connect one or two devices to it. Well, with this, as long as this connects to that, you can actually increase the number of devices that can connect to this. So you can have way more devices connecting to this. The second benefit of using this is that this has a VPN built in, so it encrypts your data, making it a more secure connection. Now looking at the ports, we have a USB-C, looks like it's for the power. We have a 2.5 gigabit WAN port, which is kind of crazy that it can actually handle internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits. We have a gigabit LAN port and a USB 3.0 port. We have two antennas, does say Wi-Fi 6. And yep. Yeah. So let's see what else is in the box. We have an ethernet cable, doesn't tell us what it is. I'm assuming it's cat 5 e or, or more, hopefully. And we have our power adapter. It is 100 to 240 volts, which is important for people traveling. And because this is a traveling router, we have the American standard, the 120 right here. And we have the 220, and I'm assuming this is another 220 as well. So these are the types of connections it comes with. All right. So I've had some time to play with this thing and this thing is amazing once you get it set up properly. And I'll go over some of these options. Now the WAN coming in in my case is a five gigabits per second up and download. However, because this is a 2.5 gigabit port, I'm actually capped to 2.5 gigabits. And if you're connected to the, uh, to the LAN port coming out of this thing, this is actually a gigabit port. So if I do a speed test that's connected to this laptop, I'm actually going to be capped to gigabit speed. So this is actually gonna slow down to um, around 940 or so when it runs the speed test. So yeah, so as you guys can see, I am getting like, this is pretty much what you get around 940 or so when it's gigabit. Okay, the crazy thing is that on Wi-Fi devices, it's very, very fast. So. I am connected to GLMT 3538 5G, which is what the Wi-Fi SSID is for that. Now my normal SSID is also on because I didn't have to turn it off for this because this is really a portable router. It's not really designed. I mean, you, it can be your main router as well, but it's really not designed for that. So I'm gonna do a test. Now this is the Pixel 7 Pro, which is a Wi-Fi 6E device, and this is a Wi-Fi 6 router. And as you guys can see, I'm getting some very impressive speeds. I'm actually getting faster speeds on Wi-Fi than I did on Ethernet. So it's very, very fast for Wi-Fi devices and cap to gigabit speeds for wired devices. Now, with that mention, most hotels don't have internet speeds this fast. In fact, a lot of, I don't know about a lot, but some of the places I've been to, when they say high, high speed, they're referring to like 20 megabits per second. And some, sometimes I think I've seen it as high as 100, but I, I think even 100 is rare, honestly. That's probably the reason why they didn't put a second 2.5 gigabit port. However, it would be nice if it was there, if they were both 2.5 gigabit ports. So just worth mentioning that, okay. Now, 192.168.8.1, that's the web interface you go to when you access this thing. And there are four ways to connect internet, to provide internet access to this thing. Number one is through ethernet, which is what we did. Number two is this can connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot. Now my iPhone is the Wi-Fi hotspot in this case. Now, this is connected to this and I actually have two internets on but there's also tethering and cellular. So there are four ways of connecting it. Now, if you connect in more than one way, this is a load balancing router. You can also run it as a failover and I'll show you guys momentarily what those options are. So, well, I can actually also demonstrate it too. So if I disconnect this and let's, let's bring my Samsung in this case and I'm gonna do a speed test. I'm actually gonna be capped to right around five megabits per second because this iPhone, the plan that I'm on, caps things, caps hotspot devices to five megabits per second. 
and it only allows one device to connect. However, if that one device is this, this allows multiple devices to connect. So if this connects to this hotspot, you can actually have multiple devices connected to this thing. So I'll bring my Pixel 7 Pro, make sure we're still connected to GL, yeah. This is connected to GL, so they're both connected to the same name for the, for the Wi-Fi. So, and then I'll do a speed test on this guy. So I'll do test again. And yeah, so you could see I'm getting, I mean, the, the same slow speeds as you would expect, but I'm, I have two devices connected at the same time. Now, if I run a speed test on this, it's gonna slow down the other speed test because when you're running a speed test, you're only supposed to run it on one device. But I will click speed test just so you guys see that you can actually run two devices at the same time. So that is kind of a loophole uh, for the Wi-Fi hotspot. Now, if I connect the ethernet back again, it actually goes pretty quickly to the faster speed. So um, already on this upload, it'll probably jump to the faster speed. I mean, it's, it's thinking right now. So it just showed up on the interface and I'm, I am recording. Yeah, I'm like, I'll just make, okay. So I guess it died for a second. All right, let's, let's just retest the internet speeds. I was thinking it might connect soon enough for that, but let's just do a speed test. It, it should be up by now. So there we go. So it's pretty fast overall. It goes back to, it sees that that's the faster source. And again, you get really, really fast speeds. This is what the Samsung, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, I could, I could, I could run the same, I'll, I'll let the upload continue so you guys get an idea for that. And then I'll click test again um, for the Pixel. Again, this is, they're both very fast basically. Okay. All right, so uh, four ways of connecting it. Now when we go to wireless, that's the name. That's the name that I was connected to. So this, this GL name, uh, GL-MT3000-538-5G. You could change your Wi-Fi name as well. I just left it on the standard that it came with. Uh, and then you could change your transmit power. So I left it on max which gives you the best possible signal. Uh, it does use a more power, but you can change that. Now, very, very important. When I received this router, this was set to 20 megahertz. And I'm gonna apply that. And when I was doing speed tests on this thing, man, was it slow. And I was like, what a bad router. It like, this, this router is terrible. I provided a 2.5 gigabit connection and it's capping my speeds to like around 200. This, this router is terrible. And I'm like, it can't be, it must be a setting. So I start looking at a lot of places, assuming the bandwidth is set to auto or something like that. Nope, it wasn't, it was set to 20. So if I click and I, and then I modified it to 160, which is the fastest one, assuming your five gigahertz device can connect to it. But this is actually gonna momentarily turn off the Wi-Fi on this and these are probably going to connect to my normal Wi-Fi uh, mesh system while this updates. This takes about a minute to go back to, uh, yeah, so we disconnected off Wi-Fi and the phone's automatically going to connect to my Deco system. And I can see that easily because it connects with Wi-Fi 6C. Anyways, so once that comes back, it is connected um, on the five gigahertz band and it's crazy fast. Now, you can also name your 2.4 gigahertz, so you have a different SSID for that, and then you can make a guest and a, uh, a guest network both for the five and the, uh, and the two gig. And then you have your list of clients that are connected. VPN, one of their selling points. So you can actually set up your own VPN. Now by default, it has NordVPN, so you can log in. So, if, uh, so I should say, it has the software for it. So if you have a subscription to NordVPN, you can actually uh, type in your info and connect. However, I have ExpressVPN and because of that, I had to click new group. I had to go to ExpressVPN, download something, drag and drop it here, and then enter some uh, username and password basically. Um, and then it added ExpressVPN as an option. Now, when you do that, you could go to the VPN dashboard and you can, I have ExpressVPN connected. I can click enable and then this will, it takes about 30 seconds or so, something like that. And it connects to ExpressVPN, which is basically, it encrypts all your data, makes you anonymous. However, it does kill your internet speeds. 
but this is true not because of this router, it's true because of the VPN you're connecting to. This is pretty much true for any VPN you connect to. Doesn't matter um, if you're on the faster computer, if you have a faster router, I could connect this to the Deco B85 and I'll still slow down. So, so once we connect to this, let me um, make sure we connect back to um, the, the Deco right here. Oh, sorry. Connect to the GLI net and I'll run a speed test again just so you guys can see um, it's it's going to be a lot slower so if I do a speed test I'm probably going to get around 100 or so 100 megabits per second something like that yeah so as you guys can see it's a lot slower because everything going out is encrypted so I'll leave this here if you guys want to see what that is okay uh, then you got the wire guard options for VPN and then there's Tor so Tor um, by the way, if you see this little cyan color, that means you're enabled. So that's kind of an in indicator. So if I disable it, uh, internet will speed up again, and then you don't see that. And then there's Tor, which is, this was the first time I've heard about Tor, but apparently it's a free and open source uh, for enabling anonymous communication. So it looks like it's a type of VPN. So... Um, just as a heads up, it is free to use, and maybe this is what they were referring to when they were saying, oh, free VPN included. Maybe, again, this is what they were referring to. Granted, I don't know if this is actually a VPN um, itself. It just says a free and open source software for enabling anonymous communication. So does that mean it's encrypted, or does that mean you're sharing an IP address, or does that mean both, or does that mean additional things? It's nice that it's there, and it's pretty easy. You just click uh, enable that, you click apply, and you're done. Again, that's also gonna slow your internet speeds. Okay, now we go to application. There's a bunch of plugins. I didn't even play with that. There's too many things here. And really what's important here is AdGuard. So it comes with AdGuard. It could block stuff when you're surfing the web and stuff. It could block things. And then you could set it as a shortcut. So I have set AdGuard to the side button as a shortcut. So if I do this and I refresh this page, it's gonna disable it. And I do this and I refresh the page, it's gonna enable AdGuard. So it's cool that you could set this up. I think you can set this up to VPN as well. So you don't have to go to this web interface to enable it there. There is a shortcut for it. It's nice to have. It also has, you know, basic parental controls, nothing crazy. Um, and some other stuff that I have never heard of actually. Tailscale allows for encrypted point-to-point -point connections. Um, zero tier, uh, securely, creates securely peer-to-peer -peer virtual ethernet network. So some stuff that I haven't heard of. Um, and then here's the main stuff. So you could do port forwarding, open ports on routers, you can do DMZ, multi-WAN. So if you have two or more um, internet sources connected to it, WAN sources connected to it, you can set up failover and you could say, oh, my priority is use the e ethernet first and when that fails, use the repeater or you could do load balance and then you could set a ratio, which basically uses multiple um, multiple web interfaces at the same time. Now, because my iPhone's internet is so slow, there's no point of that. So I just left it on failover. Um, okay, so LAN, you set up your um, your IP address and then you have your DHCP right here. I, it's set to 150, I didn't actually change that. Um, DNS network, all this other stuff, hardware acceleration, I have that enabled. And then system, you can do um, you can upgrade the firmware. It actually prompted me and I clicked upgrade when I was setting it up. Um, time zones, things like that, and you could reset the firmware. And there's a lot of options. I, I was surprised how many options there were in such a small um, router, a pocket router. So, is it worth getting this? Why or why not? Well, it depends on your situation. So right off the bat, this thing is pretty amazing for its size, its price, its packed features, and its Wi-Fi capability. And I did a speed test earlier um, in the, the farthest place from where I am inside my home, which is, I don't know, I would say maybe like 60 feet away, something like that. Uh, and it was pretty fast. It, I, I got around like 500 down and 200 up, something like that. So it has a pretty good signal just overall, I mean, this is not gonna go as crazy as some of the other routers that I could literally go down the street and I'm still getting a signal. But for something this small, um, for something with a nice interface and just, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, 
smash that subscribe button. I also wanted to thank GLINet for sponsoring this video. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.